Hey everybody, welcome to another movie review where we will be discussing Disney's live action version of Pinocchio that is exclusive to Disney+. Plus. Now don't worry, this is going to be a spoiler free review and you'll understand why in a little bit. So let's get down to it, let's go ahead and review Pinocchio. Hello there and good evening ladies and gentlemen and children. Now, right off the bat, I will say this movie is actually getting a lot of flack and a lot of discussions about how there's not much added to the story or the story itself is kind of slow pacing and stuff negative about the actual story, which kind of boggles my mind because when you go into the live action versions, you kind of expect it to play according to, of course, the actual story. Now, Maleficent, on the other hand, goes back to the book version, where Maleficent, the actual movie I was not a fan of, I was actually more of a fan of this. Now, it doesn't have to deal with the actual movie itself. Actually, it does. It does have to deal with it a little bit, mainly because of the fact that when you think of Maleficent, you think of the dragon from Sleeping Beauty. You think of the evil witch from Sleeping Beauty. You think of, like, the sorceress from Sleeping Beauty, where she got all the powers of hell. Now I was expecting it to be a little bit of a darker tone than what we actually got. I was expecting it to be a little bit more Cruella mixed with a little bit more of horror aspect. I think that would have been fairly well and in my opinion would have been great for Maleficent. I think a lot of individuals would have actually enjoyed that a little bit better. Now Pinocchio on the other hand it pays true to the homage of the old cartoon. And what I mean by that is because of the fact that through thick and thin from the beginning to the ending, it plays true key to the actual story where some Disney live action films kind of falls off or it gets added, like sequences get added that aren't really necessary. This movie, it stays true to its roots. And that's a good thing and a more refreshing thing, especially with me personally, where I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to these live action remakes now, especially after Aladdin. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of individuals loved Aladdin. There are elements that I enjoyed with it, and yes, Will Smith did bring his own flair to it where we couldn't get Robin Williams for obvious reasons, and you know, may he rest in peace. But there are certain elements to Aladdin that I didn't enjoy that didn't pay homage to the true actual cartoon that we loved. Now where individuals liked the singing, from Jasmine, I did not. But let's backtrack back to Pinocchio, shall we? Now, this movie does throw in a little bit of key elements to it to, of course, carry on the story, a little bit more character development, but not by much. Robert Zemeckis, who directed, as well as co-wrote with Chris Wentz, they both paid tribute to what we grew up and loved as far as the cartoon goes. Tom Hanks as Geppetto does a wonderful job as a individual, as a man who wants to become a father, but his line is in his work to where he's so busy that he can't really have a father or have a child or a wife or anything like that, but his dream is to be a father. And when he wishes upon the star, the blue fairy obviously comes down and creates Pokio. Pinocchio makes him more of a wooden boy. Now, as far as the Blue Fairy goes, the actress did very well. The singing was very well done. Um, and again, going back to Tom Hanks, he sold the whole mindset of being a man, especially in today's world where a man wants to be a father, but of course, it's just not going his way. And he sells the, the concern that he has for Pinocchio during moments of the movie. He shares his sadness with the audience very well. Tom Hanks actually is Geppetto in this movie, both figuratively and actually in the movie. Um, and throughout the process of his character, it's identical, if not brings more to the character than what we got in the cartoon. Now, when it comes to Jiminy Cricket, voiced by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he also does an equally well job as well. Now, there are certain sequences, like for an example, Jiminy Cricket in the cartoon calls Pinocchio a jackass. He doesn't call Pinocchio a jackass in this movie. The jackass name or word and verbiage is thrown in there, but not from or to from Pinocchio. So that's a little different from what we got from the cartoon. However, again, Joseph Gordon-Levitt does a great job at playing that character. Now comes Benjamin Answorth, which whom I'm not familiar with, but he does the voice very well as far as being animated. He does Pinocchio very well as far as with the emotions and the movements and everything that needs to come from playing a voice actor. So hats off to him. 
Now, I don't have a lot of gripe with this movie. I enjoyed Pleasure Island. As a kid, I could see myself love and enjoy my time there as well. And of course, not really enjoy it when the kids try to destroy it either, but they definitely play a lot of parts in the Pleasure Island sequences where it looks fun, it looks engaging, it looks joyous, something that a kid would like. Now, when it comes to the donkey sequence and such, um, it's not as scary as I remember it as a kid, um, but it's still wonderful as far as how they took it from the cartoon to real life. Um, and then on top of that, the only thing that I have a gripe about is really Monstro which in the cartoon I expected more as a whale. I thought is it was a whale. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen it in a long time or in a while. But this version of Monstrum, he is more of a Leviathan. Like He's more of a, like part whale, mixed with part eel, mixed with part um, tentacles with it. So that part I wasn't too thrilled out about. But regardless, it still held that fear factor to it. Now... At the end, you're probably wondering, well, you know, does he become a boy? Does he not become a boy? If you watch a cartoon, he does. In this film, of course, it kind of leaves it up to interpretation. Though they lean strongly to the fact that he does become a boy, you know, they still keep it open-minded to the point where rumors are that he turned into the boy, you know, alluding to it being rumors. But CGI-wise, when they show the showcase of him going from wooden boy to an actual boy, they, done it f they do it flawlessly. And hats off to any animation team. Hats off to everybody who is part of this movie. Because if you loved the cartoon, if you love the aspect of it, the storytelling, and the magical wonder, you'll absolutely get it from this movie. They did a wonderful job at putting both cartoon into live action. It's not my favorite as far as live action goes. But from what we've experienced recently, it's done very well. Now, I want to put it up to like uh, Beauty and the Beast standards or to Jungle Book standards because John Favreau is my favorite, one of my favorite directors. But regardless, they do a good job at the end of the day, even though like Robert Zemeckis is one of my favorite. Back to the Future will always be the top tier from him to me. So what did you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? What are kind of some of the aspects that you thought that they added to it that brought more to it or just didn't bring to the film in general? I want to know. Everybody else wants to know. So share your thoughts down below and don't forget to follow us on all social platforms as well as visit our merchandise store that the link is down below. So hats off to you guys. Thank you so much for watching and be on the lookout for the next review.